Gamers, here we go. The promised new weapon proficiencies beta feedback update. People were wondering where this was. We were thinking, is it going to drop the day before the patch? Well, I've got good news for you. Uh, no, it's going to drop today because here it is. Here we go. They've made some changes to the weapons. I think some are going to make people really happy. Others, maybe a little bit less so. But, you know, I'm just going to tease you with that as we get into this here. My name is Taylor Brooks. Well, mine isn't. The writer of this post is. And I'm a combat designer here at ArenaNet. Today, I'll be discussing the Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure new weapon proficiencies, which will allow each profession to use a new weapon type. Specifically, I'll be talking about the feedback we got from the beta we did in November, as well as the changes we'll be making to the weapons when they launch in a couple of weeks. I'll be going over a high level details in this blog, but we'll be sure to give the full details in a live stream this Friday, February 16th at 12 p.m. Pacific time. So yeah, stay tuned for that. And also, little note here, by the way, when they go they launch the new weapons launch in a couple of weeks this is we kind of know it's dropping on uh february 27th at this point but this is another implication there as well a couple of weeks i.e two weeks in other words exactly the same time that the wizard's vault says the patch is coming in 13 days but never mind that's not important right now they did a little mashup video it looks pretty cool of all the different weapons let's get into it first up we've got ranger maces were a smash over the beta weekend, being utilized by every ranger elite specialization in different ways. It was clear that maces are a strong kit, but we also knew there are ways it could be improved. They were missing an interaction with your pet like most ranger weapons. And so the first change we made was to have oak and cudgel apply a heal over time effect to your pet. This will help them stay in the action with you. Yeah, that's kind of cool uh, there. You know, a little pet interaction there as well. Will definitely help in kind of brawl situations where your pet might get cleaved down a lot. I think you're kind of specifically thinking kind of PVP world versus world situations there. Pretty cool to have that. Really leaning into that kind of brawler, skirmish playstyle where you're you're getting in there and like smashing with your mace. That's pretty cool. Extra little thing there added on there. Honestly, I feel like the mace kit was already pretty packed. So it's definitely going to be very dense with a lot of stuff that does. But I mean, I think that's kind of the standard for what they want a lot of these new weapons to be. The untamed ambush rampant growth lacked a supportive element that other skills on main hand mace have. It will now heal nearby allies when used so you can continue to hit things hard with your friends. Yeah, heal untamed support. This is actually one of my biggest complaints about it. I was like, oh yeah, they're going to make heal untamed. Let's go. It's support mace. It's going to be broken. I think they should have gone further with this, right? They, 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 <laughs> they should have gone further with this, you know, uh, and lent into it a bit more. So this is, I feel like this is kind of like, ooh, yeah, maybe we should have done that. We'll add a little bit. Wouldn't be surprised to see them continue to iterate on support untamed. But I guess they're going to lean onto it more with the utility skills and the traits of untamed itself rather than just this weapon. The weapon does have a good support kit baked into it. Um, and now that it's got a heal on the uh, unleash, that means when you're off staff, you actually do something on untamed, right? When you're on heal untamed. Because bear in mind, if you're going to play heal untamed, right now you're going staff staff. So maybe... There's some universe down the line with some more improvements to the build where it's actually going to be a real thing uh, where it can heal on both of its weapon sets uh, while still giving boons on its weapon sets. Uh, and wow, incredible. New build. Would be a cool one to see, actually. I, I do like this, especially seeing as it has a lot more might excess now because they, they, it's, it's uh, got might or whenever it does the quickness thing now, too. So that is worth noting. Lastly, much of the feedback we got about Mace is one force of nature mechanic. It didn't flow quite right, and it was hard to achieve in natural gameplay. We're lowering the stack threshold to trigger it from 6 to 5, increasing the duration of nature strength, and reducing the time you're tapped out. You'll be growing large, faster, and more frequently. What's not to love? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good line. It's a, it's a, that's a good line right there. I, I do like that. Yeah, I mean, just from the PvE perspective, this is a big buff because bear in mind this gives you a healing buff and a lot of the time you're going to be running this on druid right because druid uh, is using axe main hand right now and now you can just have a mace for more healing more boon access and even more cc remember it's got a really nice uh cc on it as well too which is already a strength of druid now it's going to have even more and now you're going to have that healing modifier more frequently right and you'll, you can even kind of like stall it right when you you know you can combo it with going into the avatar for a ridiculous healing uh with this out there as well so just more consistent and for longer honestly yeah i feel like druid is going to get juiced off this um in, in in a pretty big way bear in mind druid is already amazing top support build in pve this is just going to make it even better even more powerful uh so yeah good day to be a druid main and in terms of pvp yeah i i, I didn't 
didn't actually watch a lot of Ranger gameplay, um, to be honest, because, you know, <laughs> Rangers, come on, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I did hear good feedback about it from some of the players. So, yeah, it's cool that it's going to be more accessible. I think definitely making a mechanic like this more consistent and more readily available is certainly going to help out in, in these PvP situations where you can't just, like, consistently auto-attack, right? In PvE, you can you could already get Force of Nature easily because you just auto-attack chain people, right? And then boom, 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 boom. But wait, with this... You're going to have a larger window to utilize it. You're going to be able to reactivate it quicker and access it more consistently. That's really going to help it out there as well. Uh, that's for sure. That is indeed for sure. So next up is going to be Thief. Thief getting access to Axes spun up a revitalized version of condition-based Deadeye builds in PvE, along with seeing use on power-based Thief builds in competitive modes. Unfortunately, Axe projectiles were a lot of things that consistent was not one of them. They had a bad habit of following terrain in weird ways, often completely missing your target. We'll be updating the logic of all Axe missiles to work more similarly to normal projectiles, as well as increasing their velocity. Additionally, the combination of shadow stepping to a target and then pulling the Axe to yourself made using the Axe Dagger dual skill unnecessarily hard to use. We'll update its functionality to be like the Axe pistol dual skill so the axes will go towards your target we'll be keeping an eye on, on axe after those functionality improvements to ensure that it stays a competitive option with the other thief weapons yeah i, I think th the thief axe this is all it really needs to be honest i think there were i think players like using it it was really strong it was pumping the the really big issue was that it simply was unreliable especially in pvp it was very unreliable the projectiles were weird they, you know you could you could like jump over them as you can with a lot of other things they were just like not they just wouldn't work so the fact they fixed that to be honest i think that's actually pretty much all this weapon needed i like the mechanic a lot i think it's really cool i'd love to see more weapons that kind of utilize this secondary mechanic they have like and then you you can utilize you build a resource and you spend that resource i think that type of gameplay is actually really exciting so yeah this this is good i, I like this weapon a lot and all it really needed was yeah messing around with the yeah messing around with the uh, the quality of life and the actual functionality, I think, was what it really needed at the end of the day. And I think I'm very excited to see what happens with this. And, you know, it's probably going to be broken in PvE day one. So good news for, for you lot. Uh, maybe in PvP too, now that it will actually hit stuff. I think it did hit pretty hard, but it just didn't really work that well. Uh, but so, yeah, we'll see how that goes and how it ends up getting tuned. But, yeah, I don't really have much to say about this because I actually think the Thief Axe is really cool. Um, and didn't really need that much and you know before we move on actually and you'll notice this throughout i actually do want to quickly point something out this post is very well written uh i, I actually want to highlight that early on in the video here so nobody misses it this is a very well written post a lot of the time we're in in game dev i think communication can be very dry uh and quite boring to read to be honest but this is a very well written post actually uh by trig Taylor Brooks's Trig. That's the screen name of, uh, of this particular developer. You'll see him on the balance stream, of course, with Roy and CMC later. And I actually think that's really worth noting and, and really worth praising. I think that this is something that Arena does do pretty well. I think in the studio updates, uh, Grouch does a good job of writing there as well. But I actually want to highlight this as well. Um, we've seen some consistently well-written, flavorful, engaging posts that have some real flair to the writing. It makes them really fun to read. Uh, it, it is fun. I'd highly recommend everyone give this a read through because it is actually a little bit of fun and I, I think that's really worthy of praise communication is really important and it's something that arena has been striving to improve on a lot uh i think uh, over the, the last kind of year or so and, and this is a great example of that it, it's fun it's really really fun oh this is like this is going to be exciting for the warrior uh warrior plays out here this is big the staff is breaking ground as Warrior's support weapon, and while it landed strong, it had its own pain points. The largest piece of feedback we received about was the unwieldiness of Line Breaker. This is the uh, allied targeted ability that you could use to apply protection and do some healing and stuff. Sometimes allied... Tar oh, and it was also a stun break too, by the way. Uh, I wonder if they that. I wonder if they changed that. Uh, they maybe maybe it only hits one target. You can stun break like one person. Sometimes ally targeting is not a good match for a skill, and this is one of those cases. Linebreaker will no longer be a targeted skill and now be a ground targeted ability. This will help warriors use this skill on the fly at a moment's notice. Support warriors also notes that their adrenaline gain was substantially lower than traditional warriors. We'll be adding additional adrenaline gain to Valiant Leap and Defiant Roar to help warriors use burst skills when they want to. We know support rate is still a budding arctic. We plan to add more trade support for it in future updates. This is big! Um, so... 
Staff Spellbreaker was already good in PvP, and it had this unwieldiness. The fact that now you're going to be able to have this extra mobility, better usability on one of your better abilities, uh, like key support skills, um, and you have more adrenaline gain to more effectively use your supportive burst skill, or potentially your utility burst skills at the same time, is actually massive. Uh, this is huge. Uh, not only does it make it better in terms of its power level, also it enhances one of its strengths like warrior is a mobile support it can leap around the map pretty quickly and now you're going to have two leaps you're going to be able to leap around and use this for mobility around the map in pvp simultaneously um usability up power level up yeah this is really exciting in competitive modes i think for um support warriors in pve look i'm going to tell it to you straight i do not think this build is even remotely good but actually i think it can be that's the important thing here i, I do think it can be it needs a little bit more support um maybe some utility skill improvements they could even mess around with some spell breaker utility skills in pve uh and some improvements to traits um in in pve as well and support warrior can definitely be a thing like the pieces are kind of there uh, a little bit um it would be maybe they can mess around with some weapon skills too look at warhorn maybe look at mace even or something like that and uh, almost like convert one of these other weapons into a support weapon that might be unpopular so maybe not actually to be honest uh because that would obviously affect other gamers at the same time so let's not do that i think it's bad to look at it from a trait perspective and uh you know maybe look at staff in the future actually specifically in pve to get a bit more support in that regard but yeah there's a lot of potential here like th this is a build that can exist uh it, it can exist on the heal berserker i don't heal a lack blade sworn i think it is going to struggle um, forever because it doesn't have weapon swap, to be honest. And there's nothing really about Blade Swan that makes a lot of sense there. Uh, but Heal Berserker in PvE, I, I think there's something there, right? It can it can exist uh, over time with some tuning and some improvements to some of the uh, abilities, at least from the PvE perspective. So don't give up hope, guys, but I don't think it's there quite yet. Revenant! Here we go, it's Scepter time. Scepter gives support Revenants the sustain focused main hand weapon they have been waiting for. This weapon was well received, but there are some big ways in which its usability could be improved. The concept of charging the skills with your auto attack chain proved to be a mechanic that didn't add much to the weapon's gameplay. It was too easy in PvE, and it was too unrealistic in competitive modes. We've removed this mechanic and adjusted the skills accordingly. Good! Ha ha ha! Okay, well actually... I'm not sure I feel like... Well, yeah, okay. Yeah, it was, it was a bit scuffed, to be honest. It was... it you, you didn't really play around it in PvE because you would just spam it. And yeah, you can't really, like, chain autos on people in PvP. So, yeah. That probably is good. Unlike Warrior's Line Breaker, we felt ally targeting could improve Revenant's blossoming aura skill. You're not able to place it on an ally, sacrificing the damage for guaranteed support. Additionally, you'll... Uh, instead of gaining strength and you land your auto attack chain, it will build up strength over time. You'll now be able to reactivate the skill detonator early with the effect scaling based on how long it's been cooking. That's actually a nice usability improvement, by the way. Uh, you can be much more reactive with that barrier in PvE. Like, it rewards you for planning, but if you're off by like a second, you can snap do it to deal with incoming damage, uh, you know, in, in PvE or in PvP. Otherworldly Bond has had some big adjustments. We felt like the play pattern of an upkeep weapon skill did not play out the way we liked. Yeah, it didn't work. It was just way too expensive. Uh, so now the skill has a fixed duration and a fixed energy cost. Yeah, that makes it way more usable. You can actually press that button now. Light Blossoming Aura, its effects will now scale over its duration instead of being charged with the auto attack chain. Yeah, fair enough. I'm not a huge fan of the allied targeting, honestly. It, it, it There isn't UI support in PvE, really, for allied targeting. It just does doesn't work to be honest with the way the ui is it does work in pvp and i'm pretty sure what they're thinking about here is the following it's ignore the allied targeting in, in pve most of the time unless you're going to slap the blossoming aura on someone and heal them when they're outside of the group or give them a barrier while they're outside of the group you're mostly going to ignore it and i think they're kind of leaning into ah well we want the allied targeting to exist because it does work pretty well in pvp uh, most notably the current iteration of specter does actually utilize this mechanic pretty well in, in an interactive and quite playable way actually you know you roam in and you you know you zap people with your um heal on scepter you barrier people up on your Spectre. They kind of want to have something similar to that, I think, with this kind of support rev build. Support rev in PvP, I think, is a little bit sus. Uh, it, it does struggle a little bit, I think, with its with its toolkit to actually operate. Uh, I think, notably, like, Ventari doesn't have a stun break, so that's a little bit rough, uh, you know, to uh, in, a, in a PvP game mode. So maybe we'll see something there, but, I mean, the problem is, like, when you tend to make heal rev good, it ends up making bunker rev good, and that makes PvP bad. Uh, so maybe you've got to be careful what you wish for there. 
But anyway, I think, you know, reasonable changes there. I, I think that the otherworldly bond stuff is really good, I think, here. Uh, and the auto attack mechanic, yeah, it it's, it's probably a good idea to get rid of that. So overall, I think that's some good stuff there in that regard. Mesma! It's another one where I think they really hit the nail on the head with addressing these concerns. Um, pretty good changes here. Rifle builds give builds like support chronomars the tools to be a potent healer in addition to their unique tools. We were happy to see positive feedback around the weapon, but as with everything, there were tweaks that we could do to make the weapon feel better to use. Journey is seeing a reduction in its casting time and from its casting to impact. That's like the big AoE heal thing. Uh, and it can now be properly uh, re-aimed with the instant casting setting. I, it's really funny to me that they're playing around with this setting, by the way, and they're actually coding around it. It's one of those, honestly, that this is for another time, actually. Like, well, I'm not going to get derailed on this, but this is a this is a rabbit hole you can go down it go down a lot. The fact that there are in-game settings in the game that give you a massive advantage that not everyone knows how they work, and this one in particular requires two settings: retargeting and instant cast. Oh, so it's a bit of a nightmare. But uh, another time, okay. Additionally, the delay in the explosion on abstraction is being removed. That's the boonie one. These two changes will help your support be snappier and more responsive. Yep, it absolutely will. That's good. Uh, we also saw common feedback that Phantasmal Sharpshooter felt like a weak point in the kit. I agree. This is my least favorite skill by far. I was very disappointed. We'll be enhancing them by giving the Phantasm, uh, having the Phantasm fire faster and strike in an area on impact. We'll also give this skill two charges in PvE to allow for more liberal use. Lastly, we realized that the portal functionality of Singularity Shot can be harder to utilize in non-organized play. We added a flash effect when the portal is open to catch other players' attention and hopefully alert them. I really like that's really fun. Really cool. Because they can't make it force people to take it. That would be questionable, um, to be honest. Actually, it maybe wouldn't be ideal. Um, it's a little, uh, a little trolling there, guys. Okay, a little, uh, little meme. I think what you could do is, is make it... Oh, the, the only way they could have done this... Because it works like this in, in WoW. There's, there's an ability that's kind of like this in WoW. You can, like, pull someone to you. Um, and, you know, you can just do that. I think the only way you could do this is if you were in a raid. Because if you're in a raid then you're in that group. So you kind of like implicitly trust people to, you know, to, to not grief you. But of course that's weird because then it would work differently in a raid. Compared, yeah, it's a mess. It, it can't really happen because of the way that Guild Wars 2 works. But that, yeah, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, that's a cool change. So players can actually see it. So you can actually use it for sure. You could almost maybe make it a little bit bigger um, also to, to make it like more usable so people can, I guess maybe we'll see the effect. Maybe it will grab people's attention. Because yeah, it's a powerful ability, but unless you're on voice with people, really hard to actually um, use, right? Because players are, you know, you kind of need to know it's coming, right? In order to uh, in order to react to it and, and actually take it. So it, it can be a little bit difficult to play around that. So I, I do like this change. Uh, I would have liked to see the sharpshooter actually be a support phantasm rather than an offensive one. Uh, giving an extra charge is going to help you a lot. Like getting out more phantasms is very important for uh, boon generation in PvE and just more CC. So you can hold one for CC and use one rotationally. That's also really good. Um, and also AoE CC is always nice, right? Who doesn't love a, bit, a little bit of AoE CC, right? On, on your phantasmal sharpshooter there. So, yeah, I think good changes overall. I would have liked to see a more substantial rework to the phantasmal sharpshooter, but uh, yeah, you can't have it all. And a lot of these changes, uh, we'll see this quite unfortunately with, with Engineer Shortbow, spoiler alert. It's not, they, they, they're not like fully reworking them. It's more like, ah, we're going to tweak it. We're going to make it better. We're going to fix the pain points with it rather than completely reinventing the skill most of the time. That's kind of what's going on there. But yeah, overall, this really improves this weapon. I do think, um, you know, weirdly enough, I think Rifle is going to have a surprisingly hard time actually competing. This is a problem that a lot of two-handed weapons actually have that get added. It's way easier to integrate a one-handed weapon, a main hand or an offhand, into a build or into currently existing builds. Committing to a two-handed weapon is actually tough, right? It's quite difficult to do that when you have really competitive weapons. When I was playing Rifle on NG and uh, on Mesmer, rather, in the beta, I was actually struggling to fit all the skills in, right? It's like, really hard to actually balance using um, Scepter Shield and using rifle simultaneously because you kind of want to be camping both weapon sets if that makes any sense it's very competitive um with with, with this and and that's kind of a, a you know it's, it's definitely a tricky thing to manage there with how it kind of fits into these builds uh but it does have very strong utility to the point that even if you use it as an offset just for the barrier just for utility just for a boon ramp up even and for some burst healing kind of like your you know, the set that you swap to when something's about to happen, you use it almost like an extra cooldown. I think it will definitely see some play in that regard as well. Um, it did see a little bit of play in competitive as well in, in PvP. It was a bit of a meme build, but uh, we'll, we'll see how that one goes as well. 
Elementalist. Here we go. Pistol came loaded with an arsenal of skills to give condition-based Elementalist builds new toys and enhance Weaver combinations even further. The strongest feedback was that a lot of the animations felt too similar. We substituted some of the simple shooting animations with other spell casting animations to help vary what the weapon feels like. I think this is actually one of... This is a change that isn't gameplay oriented as such, but it's probably going to be really impactful. Yeah, because it's one of those things where if something is good but doesn't feel good, then it isn't good, right? Um, and people don't like it. And you know, I agree with that. It did have very lame animations. It was a powerful weapon. It functioned well um, as a damage option, but it was pretty lame, to be honest, compared to a lot of the other weapons. LE weapons are pretty spectacular, right? You've got sword, you've got hammer, uh, you've got dagger, you've got staff, right? These are, the, the, the animations are big and bold, right? All that kind of stuff. And, and Pistol was pretty lame. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so improving that is cool. And I really like that they're adding... Instead of shooting, they're making it more mage-like. So you're going to be like a, a pistol wizard or whatever. I like that. That's really good. I do like that. We also sped up some of the casting time and missile velocities to help keep the weapon feeling fluid. Yeah, just basic quality of life. Good stuff. Again, this is certainly a weapon that... Um, I think wasn't really struggling with its functionality. It was definitely more about the feel, the polish of the weapon uh, a little bit. And here's the elephant in the room. And, and I will slightly complain about this here. It became hard to tell which bullets you had active when your stream was busy. Elemental bullets will now display an icon on your active effects bar to help in those moments where you can't see your character clearly. And we talked about, I think I talked about this a little bit with um, Thief. No, I didn't actually, I didn't. I'm going to talk about it now though. They mean this, okay? And that, you know what? Let's say this. Not good enough. Um, a reading net, if they want to implement weapons like this that have this kind of resource, like you build a resource and you spend it, you build bullets, you spend them, you build axes on thief, you spend them, they need to seriously think about communicating this information to the player in a better way. Okay, a tiny icon here is not good. It's not good enough, right? That's not good usability for the player. Um, I like the idea of expressing it visually, like with the bullets floating over your head. That's nice. But sometimes, again, it is chaotic. You're in World vs. World. You're in a big team fight in PvP. You're in, a, you know, a, a raid or something. You're in open world. You can't see that. It's, it's very difficult for the player to communicate that. And unfortunately, that is where the UI does have to actually step in a little bit. I really think if Arena want to continue to implement stuff like this, which I think they should, it's cool, I enjoy mechanics like this, then they do need to also consider some kind of UI support for this sort of thing. And again, with allied targeting, I feel very similarly. They need to add UI support for allied targeting if they want to continue to push this mechanic. There's nothing wrong with allied targeting, but right now the game simply does not support it with its interface. It just doesn't. Um, and UI customization would really, really go a long way, especially for players who are learning something and trying to pick up the game with being able to interface with these mechanics that are being added. That's it. And yeah, that's a good example too. So like hammers on Ellie, right? Like, the, well, to be fair, you know, the the the, the hammer projectiles are pretty, pretty good, but yeah, it can be difficult to keep track of them for sure and keep track of the duration as well. But yeah. Um, we have the most important changes. Piercing Pebble will now pierce. Yeah, oh, there we go. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's the real change right there. That's good stuff. That's very, very nice. We love to see that. But yeah, yeah. I mean, again, Elementalist was definitely a weapon that just needed to be polished. Um, make, feel more fun to play. Functionality was it's pr pretty much there, actually, to be honest, in PvE. I think it was being experimented with in PvP as well, actually, if I'm not mistaken. I think on Catalyst, I think. But anyway, yeah, really cool stuff. A little fun meme there at the end there as well. The piercing pebble. And look, yeah, Ellie mains, you're still not getting your uh, longbow or your greatsword, okay? Stay tuned for that one, okay? Guardian. Honestly, there's not going to be much to say here um, because I think the Guardian pistols landed really well. Definitely one of the weapons that needed the lowest amount of adjustments, and we can see that here. Dual pistols came out guns blazing, performing well in all game modes as a new option for condition-based Guardians. Last month, we updated the Radiant Fire trait to promote a healthier play pattern for the Arctop, as well as give offhand pistol more space to be featured in those builds. We'll continue to monitor how it all shakes out to make sure both offhand pistol and torch have uses because yeah you're just going to use both of them now right because now that you can you're not reliant on this proc to get your double zealots flame you'll be able to have torch and pistol simultaneously pretty cool stuff and that's obviously going to be really nice for conditioned Guardian builds. Big DPS there as well. As for weapon adjustments, Jurisdiction will charge faster and can be detonated sooner. Yeah, just slight usability tweak. Help the skill feel smoother and help hit enemies in melee range. Uh, so yeah, a bit more consistency. Definitely kind of looking at 
a PvP situation, uh, to be honest, to make it more consistent in that regard, because obviously you can land it pretty easily in PvE, uh, no matter what. But yeah, there, I don't really have much to say there. I, I think Guardian Pistols were good. I think they were fun. I really like the mechanic of, like, firing through the symbol to do giga damage. That's really cool as well. Uh, it was good roleplay. Weapon had good roleplay. It was pretty damn good uh, as well. Strong weapon. Does what it's supposed to do. Didn't really need that much help, to be honest. I think this is... Exactly what I expected. Not much to say about this, realistically. It's all going to come down to tuning for these. Is it too good? Does it end up being too weak? Um, how do we make that actually exist? And again, the main hand offhand flexibility helps with this, right? Because, oh, maybe main hand doesn't work in every game. Well, that's okay, right? You can use another main hand, right? You can use axe or something and have pistol offhand or whatever, right? And... And that's the flexibility that comes with having the main hand and the off hand, or like a one-handed weapon. It's kind of easier to make it fit. Like two-handed weapons are much harder to kind of shake the meta up with because it's it's you you have to really commit to it. Necromancer. Swords have a strong theme and interesting concept, but unfortunately, due to some clunky animation timings and low numbers, they left players hungry. For more damage. <laughs> we'll be increasing the power coefficients on the weapons across the board in PvE with similar distance to PvE. This is, honestly, that was the big one. Um, I, I think this is the big complaint. It was just weak, right? It, it was, like, fun to use, I think. people. I think people were liking it in PvP. People were liking it in PvE. It just was bad, right? Like, it, the numbers just weren't there for this. Uh, so, that they fixed it. I mean, there you go. Um, oh yeah, there was some pretty gnarly, there was some gnarly after cards. That is true, actually. Um, we'll speed up some of the casting times to reduce the after cards on some skills so that the weapon can better match the flow of the game. Like the change, and this is the other big one. Like the change to Thief's Axe, the auto-attack chain projectiles will have their logic updated so they can hit targets on terrain more consistently. Nice! Yeah, good. This is a pretty, yeah, nice. Because you could actually jump the autos on this one. It was really funny. I saw, uh, I, I saw uh, Draza doing this in PvP. It was highly amusing uh, demonstrating that. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's a skill check, right? Who knows? But uh, apparently not. The other major change to the weapon is a rework to the Devouring Visage and Consume. This is like the fear ability. The design of the skill proved hard to pull off. If the projectile goes too slow, it will struggle to hit moving targets. So you'd fire it out, right? And then you could recall it, right? So you could fire it out and then boom, you could pull it back wherever you want. Uh, but if it goes too fast, players will struggle to recall it when they want to. Devouring Visage will now throw the orb at your target, exploding on impact to deal damage and fear enemies. Consume can then be used after that to drain the strength of targets hit by the explosion, inflicting damaging, uh, infl yeah, editing. Look, it was almost the perfect post. Inflicting damaging and weakness while granting you might. Oh dear, exposed. I'm going to refresh the page and see if they fixed it after this. But anyway, there you go. Um, yeah. I mean, I think the concept of the sword was good, and this is definitely a, a good rework to this. There's actually a bit of a theme on the weapon now. You can, if you, if you hit people with the first skill, you can kind of guarantee hitting people with the second skill. That's an interesting concept, actually, right? It, it's um, it means that you can. It, it's a bit like a lot of skills being ray of judgment, right? Like it really puts a lot of um, emphasis on the a lot of reward for landing your skills because you can then combo it with a second follow-up and then chain that with other abilities simultaneously. Um, and of course, it's the double reward of being able to like pay off the life cost, right? Because you spend life to use the first skill and you gain life back when you actually um, when you actually uh, use it again, right? So yeah, pretty interesting stuff. And yeah, sword, uh, sword being good in PvE will be interesting too, actually, because that means Reaper might end up having a really good ranged... Um, DPS weapon because staff is good for a burst right because you can put down your marks then go in shroud but if reaper actually ends up with a good auto attack basically like a good auto attacking weapon um that's really nice for reaper in pve uh really nice for reaper in pve and the mobility is going to be great obviously right you can move around necro's big weakness especially in competitive modes, is it slow as hell, right? But if you've got sword on your reaper, you've got your death charge as so you can leap around all over the place. You can also have the mobility on your sword skills as well. Uh, so that's pretty cool, actually. I think there's a lot of potential with this weapon. A lot of potential. Yeah, I, I think the thing about the range, people do complain about the ranged, and yeah, I, I don't think it necessarily needed to be ranged, but it kind of is a bit of a hybrid, right? You kind of want to leap in as well and, and like smack people with it too. So it's just a bit of a hybrid weapon. And Necromancer doesn't really have a good, consistent ranged power weapon either, right? Bear that in mind. Um, that's probably why they went with the range, because Axe, not really, right? It's like a burst weapon, really. Staff is like a support burst weapon uh, as well. Uh, kind of. So a consistent ranged um, DPS power option does actually make a lot of sense to me.
in that regard. But yeah, I, I like where they're going with this. I think these are, this has addressed basically the, the really big core issues with this weapon. We're, we're very much around numbers rather than anything else. Uh, and obviously like the, the actual functionality there too. And here we go. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. What have we got here, guys? What have we got here? <sighs> Engineer. Shortbow aimed to be a support weapon that can let your creativity flow as you design your future master plans. This weapon was not a fan favorite to say the least, and we knew that it needed a large makeover to get this spot uh, where it matched the caliber of our other new weapons. We looked over the feedback, and common themes arose. Engineer Shortbow, you, yeah, you can tell us that look how much they wrote about this. Okay, <laughs> with Coldy Chris being very slow, between casting times, delays, explosions, and pulses, yes. It was too hard to support your allies in a timely fashion. Additionally, the radii for short burst skills had to be small due to performance concerns. I guess it was with you had all these kind of crazy chain reactions going off and they're pulsing and the fields are lingering for a long time and you've got a million fields. The small area, I, I honestly, I feel like admitting that is gonna, uh, honestly, it's Giga Chad to admit that, but at the same time, that is gonna, that's gonna trigger people, okay? Uh, the small area made the skills terrible, uh, especially when you wanted your allies to stand in the area for the best of it. Yeah, it was absolutely awful oh my god we also received feedback that the shortbow did not uh, offer the right tools to make it uh more appealing over the other weapon options for an engineer all these issues culminated in a poor showing over the beta weekend leaving us with many ideas on how it could have been improved what seriously one of the one of the funniest things i saw over the beta weekend there's, there's a player called floody top pvp player and he was spamming unranked on like hollow smith uh with with shortbow and he was coped up saying this is actually good like he was in all the discords he was in my chat saying yeah it's actually good it's actually good and i and i go to his stream and he's camping hollow forge and like he he very he, he very rarely even used the web he was like yeah it's good it's good the guy loves his engineer okay he's a big ng main he was hyped about the shortbow he was ready for it he's ready to pew pew ready to go crazy uh, and you know, it's a, uh, you know, Hollow Forge. It's, it's definitely a good weapon, right? Like it's, it's almost good enough to make Shortbow viable. But yeah, it wasn't good. We agreed that Shortbow skills could be sped up on multiple fronts. The casting time and delay on impact were reduced. And now Shortbow skills do not have to be detonated. When an arrow lands, it will immediately explode. So just boom, you get the kind of uh, the effect starts to happen immediately. We have also lowered the amount of pulsing converts on the weapon so that you do not have to stand in an area for a prolonged amount of time to get the best value. Yeah, like I think they wanted to, to push support NG and obviously that's anything that requires like a long time to stand in it to get value is like a non-starter in world versus world, right? Like, you, you know, you're moving all the time. You just, you just can't get value out of that, especially in competitive modes. And I think they do want to push support engineer in all game modes, not just PvE. We were happy with the concept of chain reactions and augment your abilities. It's a cool concept, it is. And we have reworked this mechanic to better fit the new shortbow. When you use a shortbow skill now, it will mark an area for a brief duration. The next shortbow skill in this area will consume the mark and be augmented based on the first skill. So it's like a very heavily expedited version of the original, um, the effect. With all these changes... Uh, it allowed us to expand the radii of shortbow skills and play with the shapes of the skills. Finally, we added some shiny new toys to shortbow, such as a way to apply protection and Aegis. This was, yeah, Prot and Aegis were very notably lacking, actually, on this weapon, especially from the PvE perspective. So hopefully, where they say sh such as, so maybe there's some other stuff. Maybe they've added a bit more boon support to really push support scrapper in PvE. Support scrapper, uh, I think, in PvE is... It's an interesting one, um, and NG really struggles here in PvE at least. Mace Shield is insanely good. It's a very good kit. Um, it's very competitive, and there's no weapon swap on NG. This is the difficulty with adding two-handed weapons to NG and Ellie in particular, because you don't have weapon swap. Like, if you have a two-handed weapon on, say, Mesmer, like, rifle, that's, you know, good, but you're... you're it's got it's like got some utility on it and you kind of want it but you also want the other weapon set it, you can just have both right you can just take both of them you know um whereas with ng if you're taking this weapon this is your only weapon it's kind of the issue that uh staff on heel blades one as well for the same reason right like if you're taking this weapon this is it and that is a big commitment um especially when other weapons that already exist are really strong um i'm not gonna lie this one probably needed a bit of a go back to the drawing board one. I think it being a support weapon is weird. Um, I probably would have gone in the damage direction instead. 
Uh, maybe, but I don't know, it's weird. I, I don't know. Maybe I would have gone for like an offhand weapon instead, like an offhand support weapon to combo with the mace. It's really tricky. Like the design space on NG is a bit weird because you have rifle, which is kind of like a ranged DPS weapon uh, for power damage, right? Like you had, you know, not kind of, right? A little bit, it's got nerfed, but it's like, ah. Uh, the design space is a bit weird on Engineer because mace shield is just so dominant. I... I I'm not going to say never on this, but I struggle to see the world where you don't play May Shield. Maybe the numbers are really good. Maybe the boon support is actually really good. So from PvE, you can make this work on a Scrapper uh, and maybe on a, a Heal Mechanist as well. I could maybe see something like this in World vs. World, uh, purely because just if you're able to just like spam down boons and get some barrier application and get some uh, Aegis, get some stability maybe, maybe they added some stability to it, uh, and, and that could maybe work. Um, get some Condi Cleanse, like big instant Condi Cleanse in, in, in World vs. World. You could maybe make that happen because the weapons on uh, heal NG builds in World vs. World are, are they're, they're good, don't get me wrong, they have their usages, but it's mostly focused around like the traits and the, um, the utility skills and the kits, right? Of, of engineer in, in world versus world so the weapon could be a bit more flexible there and this definitely makes it work better you have like that instant snap support is going to really help out with those world versus world situations but i'm coping a little bit yeah you could do a power offhand right because you and you just really have a yeah yeah to see the chat there yeah power offhand could have worked or something like that it definitely and it, look i kind of alluded to this earlier uh, a lot of these changes are tweaks not like massive reworks right it, it's tweaks and polish and i think that's fair right look game dev is it, you know game dev is expensive and very time consuming i wasn't expecting them to like fully rework everything here but i think they probably wanted to if you know to be honest and i think they maybe just didn't really have the ability to do that right like uh in terms of just development costs and development time because you know they're busy they're busy developers okay they, they've got stuff to do uh I don't know. I, I, I don't want to be too doomer about this um, because I do trust the devs. I, I do trust the balance team in particular, actually the skills team, CMC and Trig. I think they're really good. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but I am not... I, I, I am not waiting with bated breath for this one, unfortunately. And I, I do think that it's possible this is going to be a bit of an unfortunate one for our engineer friends in the game. But we will see. But honestly, that's the only thing that I'm a, I've got a bit of trepidation about. Everything else here, I think they've really identified the key issues and actually addressed them really well. And the weapons that were not really, you know, struggling, they just left them as is, right? And they're like, yeah, sure, whatever, right? It's all good leaving it as that. Yeah, this is cool. Really cool. I'm definitely looking forward to the live stream. I will be there. We will be watching it. Stay tuned, okay? Uh, React content, guys. I am the React Lord, the React God for all this stuff. It's going to be shown off this Friday. Definitely tune in. Very exciting times there, my friends. We'd love to see that. And yeah, um, hope you guys enjoyed watching this. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments below. Subscribe. Watch the stream on YouTube because I stream on YouTube. Watch the stream on Twitch because I'm streaming there as well. Subscribe. Like the video. Oh, do you know there's this new crazy thing on YouTube? If you say subscribe in a YouTube video, they've got this crazy AI algorithm that makes the sub button glow. I shit you not. Okay, that actually happens. Okay, that actually happens. It's pretty cool. Uh, it, it's it's magic, guys. It's The AI is taking over. But anyway, this is good. I enjoyed reading this. Big shout out to Trig uh, for doing a good job with the words. I like the words. They're high tier. Okay, it's good stuff. And yeah, there you go. Oh, and also, preview of the March balance update is happening this Friday as well. I just ignored that. That's going to be big. I will make a video about that. It's going to be good. It's going to be good content. But there it is. Enjoy. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you all in the next one. This was hype. GG's. I'm out of here.